Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl Prep Football Roundup over there is the Coach Lou Valden next to me, Alan Waddell. I am the Esquire Brad Lumine. It's the 8 o'clock hour of the All-State Sugar Bowl Prep Football Roundup, and that means it is time for our All-State Sugar Bowl interview of the week. This week, we're glad to have George Teague join us on the program. George was a former Alabama defensive back who was a first-round pick of the Green Bay Packers, also spent some time playing for Dallas and Miami, and he was a key piece of the puzzle for Alabama's 34-13 win over number one Miami in the 1993 Sugar Bowl for a national championship. George, thanks so much for joining us on the program tonight. We're glad to have you. I really appreciate you having me come on and just reminisce a little bit with you, my brother. All right, so look, let's get right to that Sugar Bowl game, Bama, Miami. Not unusual for a defensive back to play a career and not get a touchdown, and, and that was the case for you until that last game where you grab a pick six and you return it for the Crimson Tide to seal that national championship. Just take us through that play. Man, it, first of all, it was very exciting as a defensive back to score a touchdown, particularly the national championship game, so it was definitely a highlight of my career. But in that particular one, we'd studied so much film, I knew – pretty much what the play was going to be. So it was a little bit of a gamble for me to go ahead and and uh, jump the route. You know, uh, when they lined up that way, uh, the, the trip formation, I got stuck on covering a number three receiver. I I had made up my mind already that I was going to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, when Gino let it fly, man, it was just like, heaven and, and I, I couldn't get in and do what I wanted to do for the uh, my touchdown celebration because I'd already thought about it and dreamed about it I wanted to strike the Heisman pose but too many guys were just too many guys were jumping on my back <laughs> so I never got it in well that play wasn't the only memorable one for you the game you you were also part of I guess the play that that really never happened a lot of people refer to it as the strip. So for our listeners that don't know, actually the Heisman Trophy quarterback for Miami, Gino Toretta out there, he hits Lamar Thomas down the sidelines. Lamar Thomas is en route to what looked to be an 89-yard touchdown. And, and George, you, you look like you could have clocked in probably a 4-1 on the 40 on that play because you come out of nowhere, you run him down, and instead of a touchdown-saving tackle, you just strictly – uh, just simply took the ball and stripped him, uh, get the turnover. But that play, unfortunately, doesn't go down in the books because of an offsides on Bama. But take us through that. And, I mean, as you're, as you're catching up to Thomas, are you thinking, hey, I'm just going to strip this guy? Are you trying to get the tackle? What's going through your mind on that? Because I know everything is going so fast, especially at the blazing speed you were catching him. Yes, there, well, there's a lot of things that's going on and. One thing you can take out of this is that fear. You know how they say sometimes you get so scared you can pick up a car or do whatever you got to do to save a kid. Well, I was scared that I had to go ahead and catch him because it's going to be my fault because I was out of position. But I was still tired from the uh, interception. <laughs> just Celebration. Had to before. I, had to go back. <laughs> so I had to go back out there and play. But, you know, Gino did throw a rope. I, I thought uh, we were in two-man. I uh, really had a lot of confidence in the, in the corner and just thought, you know, he'll, he'll go ahead and make the play. So it's kind of low for a little bit. Then when he did, I knew I had to get my best track for him. So it didn't take long before I knew I was going to catch him. And as you alluded to, I knew I was going to then try to strip the ball um, once I caught it. That's something we worked on all the time. It's something I did in practice all the time. Uh, it just turned out a little bit better that I was actually able to grab it and um, and head back the other direction. So you finish that off for the national championship, then you go on to a great NFL career, first-round pick with Green Bay. And, and, George, I told my sons I was interviewing you this week, and they said, oh, I don't know George Teague. I said, no, no, you know George Teague. And they said, no, I, I, we don't. And I said, well, remember when uh, T.O. was playing and he scored the touchdown for the 49ers at Dallas, and he went to the middle of the field, and one of my sons looks at me and goes, George T's the guy that laid him out. I said, George T's the guy that laid him out. So <laughs> memorable plays followed you to the NFL. Take us through that. Like, was that something that you were on the sidelines and be like, man, let me tell you what, he goes out there and disrespects a star, or, or was it just a gut reaction when he took off to the star you took off? It was definitely a gut reaction. I mean, there's a lot of trash talk going on before. We would had our, our share of words um, during the game, if I could say it like that. Um, 
And I did once. I knew he was going to score on that last play, and I was really just kind of watching to see what his celebration was going to be. I thought it would be something, you know, towards the fans or something. But when he took out towards the star, it was just I just kind of snapped <laughs> like that old TV show and just went and you know just forgot there was eighty thousand people in the stands and that we were playing a football game because I about had enough. Yeah, well, uh, you got a lot of cheers from the Dallas Cowboys fans on that one, so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Something we still talk about a lot. So, George, now you're kind of in what I guess we would call your second career, you know, going back, giving back to the kids. You now serve as an athletic director at a high school, uh, still give back to Alabama, I know, scholarship-wise. You also got a weekly podcast, Teague's Take. So tell our listeners a little bit about, I guess, your second career now. Yeah, I've been really fortunate that I've been, well, I was was coaching for uh, 19 years, I guess, after I got done with the Dallas Cowboys now on these Friday nights. Um, last year was my first year not coaching football, just became the athletic director only at John Paul II High School in Plano, Texas. Uh, doing a lot of good things uh, here. Uh, so, but a few years back, me and my son, my family started uh, Teague's Take as well. Just wanted to do some stuff, really, just to give people information and allow them into our house, but just have some roundtable talk about Alabama football, of course, the college, and then Dallas Cowboys and the NFL. Uh, so it's really been cool to do that. And the, the last thing we just started, appreciate you plugging that for me, was uh, the George Teague and Family and Dallas Scholarship Fund. Um, at the University of Alabama. Um, we, we're just trying to give back in any ways that we can, whether it's, you know, motivational talks, uh, something with football like we'd love to do, um, or just trying to raise some money to help some others. So, George, if fans want to listen to Teague's Take, tell them how they can do it. Yeah, Teague's Take, uh, you can go to our YouTube page. It's Teague's Take Podcast. Uh, that's the best way to get it. Go ahead and hit that bell. Subscribe. We do a weekly show. We'll be doing it all a while. I'll go back and forth. Got some good guests lined up. Um, you know, this week, Mike Farrell, who's a, uh, expert in college recruiting. The next week, you know, Bama plays Texas. So we're going to have Jermichael Finley and, and some other guys on. It's going to be really, really good. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, at Teague Football. Or on Instagram at Teague Football, just in case you're lost and trying to find a way that you want to re interact with me. That would be cool, too. There you go. Ways to get in touch with George Teague. Listen to him on his podcast. Hit him up on Twitter, Instagram, social media. George, we appreciate your time tonight, man. Thanks so much for stopping in. Really enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Good luck to all those high school kids tonight. All right. Thank you. That's George Teague right there. Hit him up if you want to listen to him. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with more scores and more updates here on the All-State Sugar Bowl Prep Football Roundup on WWL.